Over the long term, not so much, but macro in the short term is everything. Let's go back to basics. We know that the intrinsic value of a business is the present value of its future earnings. And from day to day, or even from year to year, that doesn't change very much. But the markets swing wildly all year long. And those swings are due to changes in investor sentiment, which is largely driven by macro views. So it's a big deal in the short term, but over the long term, macro is not that important. Also, macro noise largely cancels itself out. And so what's left over to drive long-term returns is the earnings performance of companies. And another reason why macro isn't that important for the long term is that companies adapt. So if interest rates are high, they change their decisions about what to do with their debt. And if inflation is high, they can pass it through in pricing or switch to cheaper inputs. Sudden changes in the macro can impact earnings for a bit. But over time, companies adapt and that minimizes the long-term impact of macro. We, we do believe there's a link between those uh, the factors and then long-term investments over time. At the very least, uh, there is a, you know, a pressure on valuations in a higher inflationary, a higher interest rate environment that affects you know, inordinately longer duration assets. Um, but then it's also a symptom of the environment that you're in as well. With that higher interest rate, you have higher costs of capital. Um, it, it changes the dynamics of certain businesses and how they operate. If you're a low cost of capital benefiting business um, that you know thrives in innovation, that's going to hurt you a little bit more when you have a higher cost of capital environment. Um, so that leads to sort of the point of you know quality. We believe is dynamic over time uh, in these different environments. Different areas of quality will be expressed in different ways. I think there's so much talk about macro because that's all there is to talk about from day to day. The future prospects for a business are much more important to long-term returns, but those prospects don't change very much from day to day or even year to year. Think of the next 10 years of earnings for a business and what those earnings add up to. That is what drives what a business is worth. In those 10 years, there'll probably be a recession and maybe a great year when everything goes right. But those individual years don't change the 10 year total very much and so they don't change the intrinsic value very much what does change daily is shifting macro views what was this month's employment report what are the central banks going to do at their next meeting things like that all this chatter is highly influential to short-term returns i'd say it's critical for a trader or speculator but not to a long-term investor because what's talked about today gets forgotten tomorrow. And in the end, macro has little lasting impact on long-term returns. Yeah, so I think one of the things that's interesting about this time right now is that after a long period of sort of relative stability, you had you know rates you know drifting lower over a number of years, geopolitical uh, situations were fairly stable. You started getting a lot of these macroeconomic shocks coming through. So first it was Brexit a couple of years ago, which seems like a lifetime ago now. Then you had you know a global pandemic, you had supply chain issues, and the crunch in response there. U.S.-China relations deteriorating, a hot war in Europe now. Uh, with a Russian invasion of Ukraine um, and, and a Fed and a central bank policy that's tilted, tilted to much more of a hawkish environment versus much more of a dovish environment prior to COVID. Um, you're digesting all these things in investors and it's changing the landscape. Um, and again, we believe that you know quality is a function and to a large extent of the environment that you're in. So the, you know, there's these different shifting environments. Quality is going to express itself in different ways. And we need to be dynamic with that and shift along with that as well. There are only two things that really matter to drive long-term stock returns, the current price and the future earnings. That's it. The rest makes little difference. Einstein famously said, compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. That's why earnings growth is so powerful. The difference between growing 5% and 10% for 10 years amounts to a difference between earnings rising 60% and 160%. That 100% point difference matters a lot more than any macro story. Sure. If there's a recession next year, earnings will be lower, and that matters a little, but only a little, because recessions end and good companies survive and they get back to their prior profitability, and then they grow from there in the expansion. Recessions make little difference in the long term. 
While earnings growth matters a lot, the purchase price probably matters even more. If you pay too high a price to start, it's hard to achieve enough earnings growth to deliver an acceptable return. And if you pay a very low price, then even disappointing growth can be good enough to drive attractive returns. So the two things that matter are the current price and the future earnings, and everything else is mostly irrelevant. We believe overwhelmingly earnings are the most important driver of stocks on a you know, stock returns on a longer term basis. Um, we have a saying in our office, you know, earnings are like gravity. Um, the, the additional wrinkle that we've added more recently is that with the higher interest rate environment, the higher sensitivity of valuations, we need to be a little bit more sensitive with our valuations of those earnings streams as well. Um, so an, an assessment of how strong and durable those earnings will be, and then also making sure you're not paying too much for those earnings over time. We do not really consider macro factors in our investment process, but they are important in one respect. When we analyze a business, we ultimately are trying to make accurate projections about what the future earnings will be. As part of that, we need to understand how the macro impacts their business. And we want to own businesses that are adaptable and resilient and can achieve our earnings projections across a wide range of macro environments. It's so hard to get the macro right. There must be at least a thousand variables to contemplate. And even when you get it right once, it's always changing. So rather than try to pick stocks that are best for the macro environment that we think will happen, and honestly, we'll probably get wrong. Instead, we look for businesses that will do about the same over time, regardless of the macro environment we're in. If we need to get the macro right to get the stock right, then what we really need to do is find a different stock. So at GQG Partners, we are a fundamental bottom-up research organization. However, uh, we would also say that we're macro aware. Even the most idiosyncratic fundamental bottom-up thesis has some sort of macro element um, influencing the way that that you know, earnings stream is going to perform. Now, with that said, the way that we incorporate macro into our process is much more from a risk management perspective. Um, and what we would say is that macro will never be a switch on, so we'll never go into a certain area just because the macro looks good. But we will allow at certain times macro to be a switch off, meaning will allow the macro to override the fundamental bottom-up thesis of a particular investment in the interest of preserving capital.